everyone welcome to our special conversations in the run up to the independence day special where we are interviewing the heads of the institutes and the heads of the various ministries in today's episode we have with us secretary to the government of india to the department of agriculture research and education and also he is the director general of indian council of agriculture and research i welcome mr tulochan mahapatra on the program uh mr mahapatra uh if you look at the journey of uh, indian council of agricultural research over all these decades uh how would you really summarize the achievements of this uh, entity uh indian council of agriculture research was born in the year 1929 more than 90 years of its existence has been very eventful its life is uh, very closely associated with the lives of the farmers of this country the agriculture in this country the way it was practiced the way we were performing it has vastly changed primarily because of the technologies the interventions they were over a period of time generated by icar and taken to the field and that has brought a very sea change we were having a life of begging and borrowing in uh, you know 1950s and 60s and if you compare that situation with that of today we are in a very comfortable position we are feeding more than 1.3 billion population of this country and at the same time we are exporting our agricultural surplus giving us more than 30 billion us dollar returns it by way of export the food grains particularly which was in a short supply and for which we had to go to other countries and uh, beg and borrow and the process to certain extent we are losing our freedom of expression because we are dependent on other countries and today we are not so whether it is green revolution whether it is blue revolution whether it is white revolution so there are revolutions to be actually taken note of in its stride of this long history of uh, traveling along with the farming community of this country and in the process giving to this country numerous innovations and technologies that has brought in a kind of satisfaction to everyone so this is basically science led develop development in the field of agriculture technology driven empowerment of the farming community and also improving the economy of this country as you know this is agrarian economy after independence our agricultural contribution to gdp was more than even 50% and today it has come down to 14 15% but despite that more than 50% of our population are dependent on agriculture and feeding this huge population is also a mandatory requirement of agriculture agricultural uh you know or research but mr mahapatra you just said that you know the the gdp uh, growth and the contribution of agriculture towards the gdp has come down say by 14 or 15% now uh, what have been the, the factors you know which which led to this uh, decline see uh, it's not that agricultural contribution has declined it's because the other sectors have grown for instance the service sector and you know the it sector how it has impacted the economy so the other sectors contribution improved significantly it's a proportionate representation to the gdp so that way it has come down 
So the other sectors almost non-existent those days and today they have assumed uh, you know great proportion in terms of contributing to national well-being and national wealth. So that way proportionately if you compare it has come down. But given the fact that we have 50 percent more than 50 percent of people they have to directly depend on this the livelihood security of people and you know in this country about 14 crore farm families are there and 85 percent of these are small and marginal having less than two hectares of land and majority of them you know having less than one hectare of land so given this scenario that their livelihood security is essential and very important from the context of nation, nation building. So if this section of the population are left out, so probably we can't say that we are a developed nation. So that's a big challenge. And uh, so there are many other challenges, but this is how the Indian Council of Agriculture Research has traversed. Uh, but you know, we are, Patra, there, there are many uh, streams uh, to which uh, ICAR is catering and cultural research and education, then you talk about the, the farmers, their enhancement, their livelihood. Then on the other hand is uh, the livestock management. So uh, let's talk about all these factors one by one as to how the progress has been, uh, beginning from the agricultural research. Yeah. Over all these years, if you look at the research in the field of agriculture, yeah. how has it really been? See, agriculture research, as I said, that our productivity was quite low. And uh, in case of rice and wheat, uh, you know, if you say example of rice, it was less than 1.5 tons per hectare. Mm -hmm. And we have gone beyond 2.5 tons per hectare by now. And our production of rice has reached all time high of 117 million tons in 1920. And uh, similarly wheat, it has crossed 100 million marks and you, if you remember that in 60s we say that by way of increasing wheat production by 6 to 8 million tons we had a green revolution. And today we have gone beyond that limit and many folds, more than 5 times we have increased our production. If you compare 5 times means more than 500 percent increase uh, in our wheat production and then rice production that has happened. So all this could be possible because of the technologies and if I have to cite one or two examples that in case of wheat our serious threat has been the disease called rust which impacts its uh, productivity. By way of new varieties we have been able to manage this rust very systematically discover genes and deploy those genes in our high yielding background and in the, in the process protecting the crops, the wheat crops from this very serious threat of uh, rust disease. And recent times Given the climate change issues and problems, we are putting multiple stress tolerance so that we address this much better. And recent variety SD3226, which is having resistance to seven different diseases of wheat. So this exemplifies that how not only we increase productivity, as I said, and it's more than 3.5 tons per hectare in case of wheat, from less than 1.5 tons. At the same time, we have safeguarded that particular yield by way of incorporating multiple disease resistance and other stress tolerance uh, in those backgrounds. In case of wheat, the terminal heat towards the flowering and the maturity if heat prevails, the very significant reduction in yield happens. So in recent times, we had to develop varieties which could tolerate that so that our uh, yield doesn't decline. 
So these are the kind of some of the landmarks and one variety is the 2967 which has gone up to in past 4-5 years it has occupied almost 30 percent of the area and that has contributed to the extent that we have crossed 100 million ton mark in case of wheat. Mr. Mahapan, but when so much of uh, research is happening and uh, we're coming out with newer varieties, then spreading the awareness amongst the farmers is also a very big challenge. So what kind of initiatives is ICAR taking so that more and more farmers become aware of, uh, of the steps and the, the new research which is coming in? See, the technology, varieties, other products, even information, all that must reach the farmers. Otherwise, we would not have had this kind of scenario as we have today with regard to food production. Despite COVID, despite COVID and all the limitations thereof, our food production stands all time high at 295 million tons. Never happened in the history of India. And for instance, the millets, which are now called uh, nutricereals, that's all time high production of 47 million tons. The pulses revolution during this phase, during the last five years, we are now 23 to 25 million tons of pulses production, which was hovering around 15, 16 million tons prior to that. All this could be possible because technology went to the fields, to the farmers, they implemented those, the new varieties, the production practices, management, uh, disease management practices, soil and water management practices, they have gone to the field. They were possible by way of several means. Our Krishi Vigyan Kendra system, they have taken off large scale demonstrations. Seeing is believing. Farmers see those demonstrations in their own field and then believe that the technology works. That is the best way to actually promote technology and transfer them. The second is we have a network of institutions and the Krishi Vigyan Kendras through which we provide large scale agro advisories to the tune of in a particular year 5 to 6 crore and in fact, last year we have given to the tune of 10 crores agro advisories to the farmers. So this provides opportunity and using digital platforms. And today we are using WhatsApp groups. We have prepared, made WhatsApp groups and through them, the farmers are asking questions and then we are providing solutions. So basically technology is supplementing the... So the, 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 the technology which was very difficult to take to the farmers. Now it's greatly facilitated because of the information and communication technology revolutions, use of more and more of digital platforms. And we have also another system which is created, the farmer entrepreneur system. We have made farmers as entrepreneurs, hundreds and hundreds of them for a single technology. They take, not, they take the technology, produce large scale, say in case of varieties and those seeds are again transmitted, transferred to other farmers in the locality. So that is another way of actually, you know, popularizing and transferring our technologies. So, so that is how they have been popularized and that is how agriculture has grown and we have become self-sufficient in everything except edible oil. So that's one area where we have to really work more. So India indeed is a food surplus nation and farmers are working a lot with the help of technology and a lot of revolutions which have come in. Let's take a break at this point of time. When we return, we continue our conversation with Mr. Trilochan Mahapatra on the challenges around the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on agriculture sector and also other issues related to livestock and forest management. Back in a moment. India Science is an internet-based science TV channel initiated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, implemented and managed by Vikyan Prasar. 
India Science on the URL www.indiascience.in is a bilingual channel with content in Hindi and English. It can be accessed on any internet enabled device. This video platform is dedicated to science and technology knowledge dissemination with a strong commitment to spreading scientific awareness, especially with Indian perspectives, ethos and cultural context. The India Science mobile app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple Store. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching our conversation with Mr. Trilochan Mahapatra, who is the Secretary of DARE and also Director General of ICAR. Mr. Mahapatra, what has been the impact, uh, very briefly if you could tell us, what has been the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the agricultural sector? The COVID pandemic impact uh, has, uh, on agriculture has been bare minimum, uh, primarily because of proactive nature of the central government. The state governments have also collaborated and cooperated. All the systems in place, they have worked day in and uh, uh, day out. Uh, to be with the farmers, provide them all the information which is required. For instance, what precautions they have to take while they are carrying out harvesting, what operations they have to carry out, observing all the precautions during kharif sowing, and at the same time, how to really take their produce to mandi and then how do they really do marketing, and even post harvest processing operations, all that have been greatly facilitated and that has led to bare minimum impact in the sector of agriculture. So the farming ha activity has not got hampered? Has not office. been impacted because of COVID-19 and that's the reason why our growth has been more than 3%. And very importantly, we are able to provide the food free to whosoever needs in this country. And the movement of produce, initially there were certain problems, but subsequently because of government interventions that got facilitated. So that also has, in fact, you know, you see the consumers, nobody is complaining of food, any items. But certainly the perishables, you know, the flower, for instance, because you don't have market for flowers. That, that has got perished. So that has got, uh, you know, uh, impacted to a certain extent. Because the kind of users who used to have that uh, kind of uh, use of uh, the, the flower uh, users, they are uh, not really uh, available today. So COVID basically hasn't had much of an effect on the farming activity, you're saying. But coming to the livestock and the forest management, if very briefly, if I could ask you, yeah. what have been the major milestones before See, we wind up the interview? In case of livestock, we have focused on two, three uh, you know, aspects during past uh, four or five years. Yeah. One is that uh, we had such a vast diversity of livestock. Mm -hmm. And understanding this diversity, protecting them, preserving them, conserving them and improving them. That was our major focus. Now we have actually Gazette notified 193 plus our breeds. We never did that. We never knew that we have so many breeds in this country, local breeds having tremendous uh, potential in terms of traits, if you say stress tolerance. We have a breed in uh, cattle, Tharparkar cows. They are heat tolerant ones. Similarly, we have a large number of breeds which we never knew. They are described, conserved, protected, and they are being utilized for further improvement. So, so this is one important aspect which we focused on. The second one, productivity, improvement, and their, its protection because of uh, you know, the varied kind of stress situation that you see. COVID is one example. COVID has come from animals. So they are called zoonotic diseases. In animals, management of diseases has been a serious challenge. And that we have been able to do by way of developing vaccines and diagnostics. 
If I have to cite one example, that in case of one disease called foot and mouth disease in case of animals and cattle, and which is a serious threat to animal productivity, the milk production goes down, and we our export is also get, getting impacted because of that. So we developed a kit for zero monitoring after vaccination, whether the vaccination is working or not. For every state, more than 25 lakh samples we analyzed in the past five years. And all these samples used to come from all the states. And analyze them and provide them information so that they, in fact, carry out vaccination accordingly so that we are able to manage foot and mouth disease in this country. And similarly, in terms of providing the right kind of nutrition mixture, because in our country, the nutrient supply system, because the green fodder is short supply, and the farmers don't provide adequate amount of nutrition to the, uh, you know, our population, uh, animal population. So our productivity is low. By providing this nutrient mixture, first of all, designing those and providing those, one can not only improve productivity, and that has been not only prepared and supplied, and that has contributed very significantly to our milk production. Milk production, the rate of growth is more than 6% which is unparalleled. Nowhere in the world you find this more than 6% growth in milk production. Fishery sector, you know, this sector is also growing at more than 6%. And we are exporting 7 uh, billion US dollar. Uh, you know, uh, we are, uh, you know, earning by way of export of uh, fish, uh, fish from this country. And there, we have not only diversified breeding system, more than 60 different fish species we have bred and induced breeding system we have developed. Feed system, feeding mechanism and system has been developed. Their health management system has been developed along with the diagnostics particularly. And very importantly, the aquaculture system, the management system has been developed and which has tremendously contributed to this you know, or production of Mr. fish. Mahapatra, would it be right to say that as far as the agriculture sector is concerned, uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi has been talking about making India self-reliant, making India Atmanirbhar. So as far as agriculture goes, are we an Atmanirbhar nation? We are Atmanirbhar in all items of our consumption, except edible oil. That's a big challenge. And the climate change is a big challenge. The depletion of nutrient from the soil is a big challenge. The availability of water, the underground water depletion is taking place in many areas because of unmindful water use. So that's a big challenge. Unbalanced use of fertilizer is a big challenge and pesticide is also a big challenge. So we have to manage our resources appropriately, the natural resources, that's a big challenge. So and under climate change regime. So, but before I wind up the show, uh, you also have to go. In one line, if you have to give a message to all the farmers who would be watching this program on this Independence Day, what does Mr. Paha Patra have to tell them? My Kisan Mitro, Bharatiya Krishi Anusandhan Parishad, you are standing with you. During the Dauran, you were with us. और जब से भारतीय कृषि अनुसंधान परिषद देश में है तब से आपके साथ लगातार हम लगे हैं आपके खुशहाली में हम खुश हैं देश के भविष्य देश के खाद्य सुरक्षा आपके हाथ में है आपका मेहनत ये देश को खाद्य निरापत्ता दिया है और ये देश को इसका कुपोषण दूर करने में आपका मदद की आवश्यकता है और मैं समझता हूं हम लोग मिलकर आगे ऐसे ही काम करते रहेंगे और आपका जो भी आवश्यकता है टेक्नोलॉजी के बाबत में हम आपके साथ हैं और देते रहेंगे आप सबको बहुत बहुत शुभेच्छा अभिनंदन और बहुत बहुत बधाई आप लोगों के मेहनत से हमारा उत्पादन 2019-20 में सबसे ज्यादा रहा फूड ग्रेन प्रोडक्शन दो मिलियन टन इसलिए मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं आप सबके मेहनत के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू
you so much, uh, Mr. Pahapatra. It was a pleasure talking to you. And as he's just said, a lot of work is being done in the field of agriculture. And uh, for any agrarian economy, farmers are the future. So wish you all viewers also a very happy Independence Day. And thank you once again, Mr. Pahapatra. Thank you very much.